This is just a sample of the training available at ITDVDs.com. To see complete training, please go to ITDVDs.com. Let's begin the sample. Storage Replica is a great new feature of Windows Server 2016. It performs block level replication of data on one drive, on normally one server or one cluster, over to another drive on another server or another cluster. And it performs this block level replication via SMB3, which has been around since Windows Server 2012, so it's a pretty solid protocol at this point. So it can be server to server replication, cluster to cluster replication, or it can perform, be performed within a stretch cluster. So let's take a look at an example of server to server replication. In this case, we've got a server FS01. It's a file server here. This is going to be what's called our source server. It's got an F drive, and the F drive is where maybe everybody has their files. So it's a file server. Files are constantly being written to and changed on this F drive. And that's going to be replicated over to another server, FS02. So another drive on FS02. And they're not shared disks or anything like that. They can be completely separate. So these disks could be internal to FS01. And these ones are internal to FS02. And the replication just happens over the network. So if something happens to this drive or this server, let's say the server crashes, we can't get it back up, well, we can make this drive active on FS02 and we'll have all of our data because it's constantly being written to as changes are made at the block level on this machine, on this F drive, they're constantly being written over to the F drive on FS02. There are gonna be two types of replication we can perform here synchronous and asynchronous. So with synchronous what happens and synchronous is considered zero data loss so you won't get data loss if something happened to FS01. FS02 the F drive will be completely up to date. The reason for that is when a file or a, a block is changed on our F drive it's actually not seen as committed until it's also written to the F drive on FS02, the destination. So once that block is also written to FS02, FS02 sends back an acknowledgement and then that block is considered changed or that file is considered changed. Now as you can imagine, if I'm working on a file that's on the F drive and it has to be written to both drives before the computer comes back and, and responds, if I've got a slow network connection in between these two servers, well, that's really going to slow down performance. So if we're using synchronous replication, we want to make sure we have a fast network in between our source and our destination. The other option is asynchronous replication, and we're going to use this normally uh, in like a disaster recovery scenario if we have a slower network connection in between our source and our destination. That's because what's happening is the, if a file or a block is changed on our source, it automatically comes back, just like a normal server would and responds right away. That change is sent over to FS02 and then written to FS02. It doesn't, the source server doesn't wait though for the acknowledgement to come back from FS02 that it's been written. So because of this, there's a possibility that FS02 could actually be behind. So a ton of changes could be going on on our source server, and those changes are being constantly transferred over to FS02, but because there's slower bandwidth in between FS01 and FS02, it's taken a while for the data to go over the wire and then be written to FS02. So if FS01 goes down, well, FS02 technically could be uh, behind, or there could be some data loss. But because it's constantly being replicated, it's not like a snapshot thing where it takes a snapshot and then sends the data over. Because it's constant, it's normally going to be reasonably up to date. Unless we have a lot of changes on our source server and the ba it just can't keep up by passing it over the network. So basically synchronous, which is actually the default, we're going to use if we have a lot of bandwidth and throughput and copying the, the data over is no problem. Or for mission critical applications where the data on there is super important, and we can take a bit of a performance hit just to ensure that we're going to get zero data loss. Then we're going to use synchronous. If we have a slow network connection, we're probably going to use asynchronous. Or if we're transferring over to a disaster recovery site, has to travel over a VPN that's slower, 
and we can take a little bit of data loss, then we would use asynchronous because we don't want to slow down our source server. And one of the great things about storage replica is it is block level replication. So it supports BitLocker and deduplication because bit, uh, the, the storage replica block level replication happens at a much lower level than BitLocker and deduplication. So it's just transferring the data over. It doesn't care what the data is. It just transfers all the blocks over and makes sure they're the same on the destination that are, is on the source. And because the block level replication happens at such a slow or low level, it also replicates over VSS snapshots. So if we take a VSS snapshot, that gets uh, you know, sent over to our replica, in which case we can get our application back to a consistent point if we need to. The source and destination servers can be a virtual machine or a physical host. Either is supported, just has to be running Windows Server 2016 uh, data center, and we'll talk about that in a second. It also can use authentication and replication uh, traffic can be encrypted. So this is a big advantage uh, security-wise with using storage replica.